Okay, no, I'm not, I don't want to do that. It's, <laughs> it's kind of fun, but like just not worth it for me. Um, but at the beginning, I feel like it did maybe help me in terms of like learning kanji. Like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I say like, give it a go. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just like, it's like <laughs> one, uh, this one uh, this one comment. Oh it's, it's a miracle you guys contacted contacted Kurt Cobain. Congrats. Yeah, hopefully I don't die in the next Yeah, uh, yeah no for real. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Korekana Podcast. We're here live once again. And this interview, again, like we mentioned, is live, but we'll edit it later on. So you can be look out for that. But feel free to ask any questions along the way. And today we have a very special guest with Miso. And we're going to be talking about Japanese learning, of course. So if you have any questions related to that, make sure to let us know. So here we go. We're doing the magic swap, and oh, and we're all here. There's Miso. Welcome to the podcast, Miso. To be here. Love all to right, see Miso. You. So, can you give us a quick background of who you are and where you're at today? Okay. Um, I guess I'm Miso. I'm 22. Uh, I've been learning Japanese for just over two years, I guess. Um, I'm a university student studying electrical uh, computer engineering. Uh, you know, I do music stuff. You know, that's kind of one of my big passions that has been for a very long time. Uh, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what else there is to say. Um, yeah, but cool. yeah, studying Japanese for three years, is that all with the uh, uh, immersion based method? Or so, did you study? Three years since I started immersing uh, in high school and stuff. Like, you know, I, I was kind of a weeb since, since even like junior school, right? So I'd always like wanted to learn Japanese and not knowing how to go about it, you know. Try to you know use like the tofugu resources and、mm-hmm. try to start Akim and then you quit because like、um, try to do Cordex and I, I just didn't have the motivation because、um, I didn't really have like a very、uh, good idea of like where that would take me and like you know a real、uh, sense of progression or whatever. So I just kept on quitting and restarting.、Um, but yeah, three years since taking it seriously, I guess. I see. So would you say now? Because、uh, a lot of people at the three year mark say that they're, they finally feel like they're completely fluent. Would you say that that's the case I mean, for you? What is complete? <laughs>、right? um, I'd say like, I'm, I'm pretty fluent in some sense.、Uh, a lot of the time on Discord, like, I'll try to like, you know, pass as Japanese and then like, see how long they can figure out till, or how long it takes them to figure out that I'm not.、Um, which is a great way to improve your output, I think. But,、uh, you know, I, I still.、Um, You know, get called out frequently enough, not all the time, but quite a lot.、Um, and yeah, I'm definitely not perfect. But, and there's a lot of improvement to go. But I think I'm at the stage where I, I feel like I don't have to, like, or I don't want to、um, keep on putting off stuff that I want to do with my life because、yeah. gotta get、right. a bit of Japanese, right?、Um, so yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like,、um, it's like if, you, if you only focus on getting good at the language, you're going to get to a point where. Now you're really good at the language, but that's it. It's like when you talk to a Japanese person, you, there's nothing you can offer to the conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's like, even if you get native level of Japanese, if you're still like a boring person or whatever, or, you, know,、um, yeah. you know, why not speak to any other like random、uh, Japanese person who has like no skills or whatever?、Um, so, yeah, I guess that's important is like finding a, like a, a balance, I guess. Right. So, you'd say that that's not really a goal, like a native level Japanese or anything like、uh, that? I, I mean, that, that stuff is, is uh, uh, it's tough because I have like complexes about my Japanese, I guess.、Um, like, I, I hate. So, in, in English, there's a thing called like、uh, vowel centralization, which is, you know, a Dogen exa- example is like instead of saying Tanaka, you say Tanaka, where everything that's not like stressed becomes a t u n a k u And, like, obviously, I don't do it that badly,、mm-hmm. but I'll do it enough that I'll listen to a recording of myself and be like, oh my God, that, that vowel over there sounds like so, like, Gaijin, you know?、Um, and you, you, that, that stuff irks at me. Like, it hurts my self esteem. Like, <laughs> I don't、right. know what else to say. So,、um, there's a part of me that's like, you know, once I have a job and I'm getting you know, paid and stuff, I should save up money and, like, go, you know, 
and uh, pay for, to put myself through like Seiyu school <laughs> in Japan or whatever. Yeah. Part of me still does that, but um, yeah, it, it's something that like, it's difficult to get over that, like not being perfect, um, for me at least. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what about like pitch accent, pitch accent specifically? Is that something you focus yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so since I started immersing, like, <laughs> I, I was kind of crazy when I started, like I watched Matt's videos and I, I was under like a full sense of how good I was before I started immersing. So I hadn't finished RTK. I tried to do it in high school because I saw the Abroad in Japan video about it. And I was like, right. that makes so much sense. I'm going to do that, right? Um, and I stopped it after getting like 800 or 900 through it, um, you know, with full production, with physical flashcards and stuff. Um, you know, and I I quit just because it, I was it was taking up so much of my life. I was doing it during class, during like lunchtime. I was um, instead of hanging out with my my girlfriend at the time or like my my friends, I would just want to be in the library and make, make physical flashcards. You know, <laughs> um, and so I just cold turkey like quit. Um, and then when I started immersing, I went back and started it from the beginning again. Uh, and then I did at the same time I did take him. And at the same time, I started sentence mining. So while still doing all that stuff. And then I was like, well, there's monolingual definitions I can understand even at this level. So I might as well like do all the monolingual I can, right? Um, and so yeah, I basically started the monolingual transition while um, at the beginning. But one of my friends uh, watching the stream says there's no sound. Oh, really? Oh, really? There's no sound? Apparently. Um, uh, you think that would be on... super awkward. Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually, think... like, I can hear it, like, I'm, yeah. like, going through it. Okay. I can hear you talk. Yeah, I can hear okay, it, cool. too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's <laughs> a little bit oof. Um, so, yeah, what was I saying? Um, yeah, but uh, you say you, you, you switched to the monolingual dictionary, like, even in the beginning yeah. of yeah. studying Japanese. Yeah, so, and obviously, so... like, I, I put a lot of English on the cards and stuff. And I've never, I've always yeah. been okay with, like, checking English if I uh, don't know stuff. Um... But like, I, I guess like I, I'd watch, um, uh, <laughs> I'd watch like um, Matt's videos, and then he'd be like, "Well, you might as well just take the pitch accents right there on the car on on the dictionary entry, right?" Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, she's right. It is right there. I might as well take it, right?" And yeah. so like, as soon as I started immersing, like it was always like one of those things at the back of my mind, you know. I see. So you feel like you have a pretty good grasp on like pitch accent and differentiating I, between different ones. I mean, I, I still screw up a lot of stuff. Um, Right. But yeah, it's you know, nice. I can. I'm not terrible at it. Uh, like nice, it's... nice. So, what about for Anki? Do you still uh, use Anki and add some yeah. cards? The last couple of months, I haven't really been uh, adding so much cards, which is nice because like I only have like twenty something, twenty seven reviews or whatever. Um, but yeah, I guess like I, I recently just had finals. I finished on Friday, and so um, like. <sighs> At my current like level of vocab and stuff, like so, I, I made like nine thousand five hundred cards or whatever. Um, it's kind of like I'll make cards, but I'm not like making myself do ten a day or whatever. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I guess during your kind of period with Anki so far, would you say you enjoyed it? At times, <laughs> like it's a love hate relationship, right? Um, like because it does so much for you, but. There, you know, there's a lot of nights where it's just like it's getting late, and you just like keep on putting it off, and it's just like that huge weight on your shoulders of like, oh, God damn, I got to do my reps. Uh, and I would often like put off immersing until I had done my reps, and like use it as an excuse not to be productive. Like I don't want to do my reps, but I got to do my reps before I can like do real stuff, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, like I enjoy making the cards more than I enjoy reviewing them. I think um, catching the Pokemon is like a lot like nicer than like trying to grind it to level 100 if you know what i mean right yeah right. i know i know what you mean it's like it's kind of like collecting like yeah so like it's like you have a collection and you're just trying to collect all the words yeah i think the novelty of that wears off after a while though yeah so how many cards um do you have right now i mean so for for sentence cards i think like nine five including when i did take him so take him is like 800 cards so right. i usually just like take my uh, like if I do that now, I go, how does Anki work again? Manage note types. Um, yeah, 8854 plus 800 is like 96, right? 
Um, nice. But then, you know, I've made all kinds of cards. I did, um, like, you know, I saw Matt talk about how you maybe you should do it for Japanese names. And so, like, I tried that. I tried doing that production. So you'd have the person's face and you should write down their name. Uh, basically, I can't write anymore, by the way. I used to be able to, but I completely, there's like no point in putting myself through the reviews. Um, I tried to learn like hentai gana for a while, like the super old, um, like variations and stuff. Uh, I gave up when I realized that there was like eight variations for each character. So like, no thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I had like a rare um, readings deck. I had like a counter deck, you know, made, right. and it's on Anki Web for Japanese people. Um, I tried doing that, but like, you know, I, I did that for a couple months, but I'm just... Yeah, I, th I think stuff. that's like a trap of, of Anki. It's like you yeah. you start to not find words in normal immersion. So you think to get better, you have to learn like really rare, rare yeah. stuff. But actually there's a lot, still a lot to improve um, in terms of like speaking and understanding. For sure. For just I mean, like the, my, yeah. my vocab's not like infinite, right? Like, yeah. I was playing, uh, what is it called? Z Zero Escape. Um, I was playing some of those games. And like, for the most part, it's super easy. But then, you know, there'll just be like random words. I don't know, like, all oh, the name of this fish or like whatever. And then, no, I'm going to make cards like Samma. I actually don't know the Jeff Jackson. It might be Samma. Yeah. <laughs> you double check that. But um, yeah, like, there, there's still tons of words. But, you know, even natives don't know words. So, I think for me, yeah. it's just about like not beating myself up about that um, and learning just to deal with that inferiority complex of like not being native and just learning to try to be okay with that. But yeah, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like Anki is more useful for, for like party tricks almost like, yeah. Like, oh, I know sure. all the fish kanji. I mean, I mean, I've done that I've done when that. I speak to Japanese people. Yeah. I, I'd be like, oh, well, you know, like because I, I, um, you know, I, I learn a lot of words from like my input aware. For sometimes I won't know if a word is even common or not, and I'll end up using a word that you don't know. And then like at the time, you know, the, like it's just so pretentious. I'm like, I kind of hate that, that kind of just like trying to improve yourself, but you know, your ego still wants to do it a bit. Um, but just yeah. like the word like shousha, like um, not like winner, like, you know, winning person or whatever. Shousha, like um, it means like oshare, but it's like super like hard kanji and stuff. But I mind from ori more like, from like a year or so into Japanese. And I'll always like like have those words like to like pull out and be like, I know hard words, but it's it's so stupid. Like I wouldn't recommend that. You see a Japanese person and you you see it's time this time to pull out the words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, You've activated my trap thing. card. <laughs> it's more like if they ask me about how I'm learning Japanese, then like it, you know, and it comes up in the conversation, then I'll be like, you know, like it's difficult because like Japanese people, like it often feels like they're like looking down on you for being a foreigner a lot of the time. Um, like I have I had an experience where I got scouted. Um, I went to the Japanese embassy thinking I was going to apply for Mext. Um, I didn't end up applying. But while I was there, uh, there was a Japanese guy who like heard me speak Japanese. And so after I left, like when I was like down in the parkade or whatever, he came, he came up to me and was like, um, oh, like I work at Mazda. Do you want to like exchange line? Because you're like, oh, you're studying engineering. That's cool. Um, let's just like exchange details. And I, I didn't hear from him for like a year. And he sends me a message being like, oh, I have a friend who's starting a tech startup. Like, would you be able to like help out like part time or something? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I guess. Um, and like, I I haven't been like seeing them that much um, because of a whole bunch of reasons. But that was something that like really annoyed me is they'd always be like, oh, well, you don't have a JLPT. Um, they, they would like talk up the the, the JLPT and one so much they'd be like, oh, even we wouldn't be able to like answer all of them. And then like they pull out their computer and like get me to do like the question, the example questions. Um, Damn. And then they're like, oh, I bet you don't know how to read this. And it's like, um, what was the word? It was like idomu, right? Um, and like that, that's really what I hate. It's not that I want to be perfect. I mean, I, I kind of yeah. do, but it's more like I don't want to constantly have to live my life being looked down upon yeah. as like you're I mean, just a far you're just a yeah. you know you're just a poser you know you're not real Japanese i mean i, I, I kind of know what you mean with like the kind of looking down like oh you just you you wouldn't understand you're not japanese but i've never like had the experience or heard of like a japanese person pulling up the the jlpt <laughs> and one be like just how jozu are you like yeah. just how jozu you think you are you should have like then, a like, game show got, of that how jozu like, are you <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I got all the questions that they wanted me to do right, you know, before they yeah. just like. But then they're like, oh, you, maybe when you graduate, you should go to a what is it called? Like not like a semon gakko, but like gokugaku. you know, a place where you, you know, like a place where you go to like learn Japanese in Japan. Yeah, go go go. Yeah, yeah like, they're like, yeah, maybe you should go to one of those. And I was like, like, lol, what? Like, what do you, what do you expect them to teach me? <laughs> like, <laughs> have, so know, have you thought about taking the JLPT? I thought about it. I thought it would be good for my CV. But, you know, in my country, so I live in South Africa, right? Uh, the only place I can do it is Johannesburg. I live in Cape Town. It's like a, you know, $100 flight. Um, and, then, you know, like I have anxiety and stuff. So a huge part of me is like, what if I fail? Um, <laughs> what happens if I do all of that? You know, I've been learning Japanese for three years. Um, yeah. You know, sacrificed so much, not gone to the movies with my friends, like, you know, uh, being a complete loser about it. And just like yeah. imagining like how my parents would react if I come back failing or whatever. Just be like, you spent this much time and you still whatever. And I know it's like irrational, but it's kind of yeah. like there's no good reason for me to make myself do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you could, I mean, you could take a take a practice test at home. Like nobody knows. Yeah, I've if, done, if I've you done the <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but I think know. at three years, it should be no problem, especially like yeah. if you had used on key. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I also did like the the next like they have these um, practice or like past papers and stuff, and I would do those. And it's kind of funny how like I would get I would they have like elementary, then intermediate, and then advanced. How I get like eighty percent for the, the elementary and the intermediate, just because I didn't know how to like write a lot of this stuff. And like, um, and then for the advanced, like I still get like seventy, right? So it's like. It's it's like that much harder, but like you're capped by like what you what you spend your time doing, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I guess like, what does your immersion look like today? Okay. So today, um, I mean, like I said, I, I've been doing finals, so I haven't been immersing that much. But I'll, you know, I have like a private Discord server with some of my friends who you know are learning Japanese, so we'll often like watch anime together um, or like stream games that we're playing. Uh, you know, I play visual novels sometimes. Um, I guess like I'm also probably like pretty ADD. And so I'm like looking at getting medicated for that. But that's something that like I really struggle with is that I'll have like this huge like backlist of things like books I want to read, games I want to play. And I'll like try to make myself do them. But then it's not fun because I'm just doing it because I feel like I have to, right? It's like, gotta yeah. get rid of the backlist. And then that that's something that's really stressful for me because it's like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Can I swear by the way? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, all good. Okay, cool. Um, and so like, yeah, like I know some people who have like a book walker with like, you know, 170 books that they read in the last three years or something. And I have like 17. And it's not like I don't like reading. It's not like I don't immerse, but it's just, like having that mindset of like having to log everything and um it's, it's really really like detrimental for me i guess yeah. um so yeah immersion is is um that that's something about it's really hard for me but yeah I'll, I'll play games um um watch anime uh you know i've gone through phases of you know there's a lot of japanese youtubers i really like like kyo or like ishizawa or like uh koichi tv is really really good um I guess we can put them in the description. Uh, <laughs> the edited version. Um, yeah. I mean, even at, at the stages where I've been super anxious and really like worried about how much immersion I've done, like I still use these like three hours a day. Um, right. Yeah. Right. And I guess like um, like being anxious about immersion is that more like anxious that you're not improving or anxious because like maybe there's like a big expectation in the community like oh it's like three years oh. you're supposed to be this good but, i mean it's also just like you'll see people who like i said will have who are very they don't have like the same like motivation i wouldn't call it like a motivation problem but the same problems with like doing stuff and you'll see them like making these huge like flow like, not a flow chart like yeah data sheet of like all of their, their tracking and stuff and it's like Stevie. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to call that out because, like, like individually, if that's what helps you, then yep. go for it. 
But right. I feel like in the community, there's this sense of like one upmanship where it's like, oh, look at how much I do. And you're just a poser because you only do two hours of immersion a day. Don't you know that you're never going to get good if you you know? I'm like, I just hate that right. because it's like yeah. so damaging. And like, like we're all doing this to have fun at the end of the day. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Right. But I feel like that mindset and like that internalized. um, Yeah, like that's been the most damaging thing. <laughs> for me learning Japanese, if that makes sense. Right. But yeah, it, 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 there is an external part of it because y you want to feel like validated by your community. Um, mm. But it's also like internally, like I feel like if you've, you've put so much time and effort into this thing that you love and then, you know, you get people like looking down on you and being like, oh, you're such a scrub because you do that. Like, like that's just so, so heartbreaking and it's like it starts making you hate the thing that you love, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Right. I guess, have you kind of dealt with that then in terms of, because that's something that's been prevalent in the community for quite a while now, yeah. right? And I mean, yeah. you're still going strong at it. You're still getting your three hours of immersion in each day. So what kind of drives you? I mean, like, I don't really do that much in English, I guess. <laughs> and I it's see. like, that. It, it's something that like, whenever you like see people on Discord or like even IRL, who's like, I want to learn Japanese. How do I get started? Um, what textbook do I use? I mean, like, when, when it comes down to it, it's like when you're, when the option of watching stuff with English subs exists, it's like, you're all, if you have a bad day at work or, you know, you're super tired, you're always just going to like want to do the easy thing. You're going to make excuses, right? But when it's like doing stuff in English isn't an option, right? Then you, you adapt. And within a month, it's like, it's not watching anime in Japanese. It's just watching anime, right? And so, I mean, that that's like the real secret, I think, is just... <laughs> not do not playing video games in english and stuff and i mean like you can make exceptions like like for me like the fourth season of rick and morty never got a uh a japanese dub right um so you can't so watch yeah. it <laughs> we'll what? never know what happens <laughs> you never know rick and morty what's that um and, and i think like just being healthy about it like yeah it's it's hard it's hard to find that balance um because I guess and it's also an individual thing. Like some people, they can be perfectly like mentally stable and healthy where Japanese yeah. is the only thing in their life. But yeah. for other people, it literally will drive you insane. OK, yeah. so I think you need to find for yourself. It's like, do, are you the kind of person who needs to be focusing on other hobbies as well? And if so, or other important stuff in your life? And if so, like, how are you going to find that balance? And I'm, I'm kind of like jealous of the people who, instead of like being super into music and stuff or like really into drawing, because you can always listen to a podcast while you draw, right? Or like watch something on another screen. Um, so like that stuff like that, like I at the beginning of this year decided I'm going to try to get better at singing, right? And it's like even like reading lyrics as you're singing is reading practice, right? Because, you know, you have to know how to pronounce the word in order to be able to sing it, right? So... Like never allowing yourself, like I'm never gonna use the romaji. Um, you know, I'm just gonna like look up every word. I don't know. I can make cards for that, you know. And just like looking at how you can find that balance of like not feeling like you're not doing any Japanese and then you're wasting your time, but also, you know, enjoying stuff that you enjoy, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned singing just now too, which I want to get into. But we also yeah. have a quick question from our from Otter Power over here of yep, for you yeah. miso and he says how did you find out about immersion learning okay so good question so like i said before um i watched a broad in japan video about rtk and then i was like makes perfect sense and you know i got super like red filled about rtk if that makes sense um and then i don't know how it must it must have just come up on my youtube recommendations and i saw like matt's video about why rtk is the best way to learn kanji it's funny now because like that those opinions like you know in terms of the community they were you know under fire or whatever um but then i was already sold on it and so i was like hey this is a smart intelligent guy affirming stuff i already believe right so right. that's why i started watching his other videos um yeah and it was a different time back then because there, there wasn't refold this was before mia this was before any of that stuff so it was interesting like watching the videos like watching the the input hypothesis video where that it's like the mirrored um like japanese movie with like the balloons and stuff like i don't know if you guys know what video i'm talking about 
um where matt would be like oh as steven crash or like the, the input hypothesis is at the core of all of ajat and i'm like what the hell is ajat <laughs> it's like all of these videos like assume that you have so much knowledge and so you just have, i had to like watch all of them and like slowly piece together this thing um and yeah like obviously i went down the thing of like trying to convince my friends trying to convince everybody i know um why this is gonna work and why this is you know um pretty cringe <laughs> uh yeah i hope that answers your question <laughs> Yeah, Otter Power says RTK pill Lamau. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, but I guess going back to the singing here. So yeah, for singing, you do sing in Japanese, right? Yeah, it's it's hard. Um, because <laughs> like I said earlier, like how vowels are different in Japanese and English, and like the placement's pretty different. So, like for example, like if I'm speaking English, you know, I'll speak like this. You know, like the quality of your voice has to change to accommodate for that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff like, you know, it, when you say like, ah, in English, it's like, ah, and there's like this like trail off where it's like, oh, and then there's like, whatever. Whereas in Japanese, it's like, ah, you know, it's like super choppy, super defined. Um, and like the, the vowels are tuned differently. Um, so like that, that's a really hard thing that I'm dealing with, I guess. Um, I guess, yeah, that's the hardest thing about singing in both languages. And then I guess like one thing I really struggle with Japanese songs is that I know a lot of like anime songs. And so I'll go to like a karaoke server or, you know, karaoke uh, server. And I'll only know like the TV size. <laughs> I won't know the second verse and stuff. And like just give off halfway. Uh, it's cringe, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess like um, does having like a background music you think um, help you with better pronunciation yeah. in, in Japanese? Yeah, for sure. I think, like, when I started, um, like, showing interest in Japanese at, like, you know, 13 or whatever, yeah. I, like, started, like, singing anime openings. I can remember at the time also, like, going through, like, the, the Gozion and being, like, ah, e, u, e, o, and, like, and, and so I feel like that early exposure did help um, with pronunciation and stuff. Um, obviously, like, I didn't, I didn't acquire a pitch accent or anything, you know, magical like that, but I do think that helped. And then when learning pitch accent, like music, I think help with pitch accent, but it's like a double edged sword because it can actually like screw up your perception in some ways. So like hebang, like for those, I'm not going to assume everybody knows about pitch accent, but in Japanese, like there's different patterns, right? And there's this pattern called hebang where it's like completely flat in theory, right? And so with the word like gakko, you know, mm, rrr, it's like supposed to follow that contour, right? But there's some people who would make it drop a bit, gakko. I'm like mm, at the end and like that kind of stuff really screwed up my perception because like i had relative pitch i could hear that it was a drop i can tell you and dun, 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 dun. okay that's a major second it's dropping by a major second um why is it still like flat and um you should ask that to the japanese person <laughs> like i mean they this is a haven word you should not drop by a major second <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, what I would do is that I can remember I back on the the Patreon server back in the day, I like said to Matt, like, hey, or like, why um, does this word sound like this? It was like, um, uto, 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 no, uto, uto, which is like to to be like kind of um, like, I don't know, drowsy, I guess. Oh. Um, and then in the, 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 the sentence card, it was like, uto, like, Y you could see it in like a pitch analyzer that it went up yeah. for the to, so it went like uto uto, but like not that much. So it was like it's still heard as like um, yeah. If you don't know pitch accent, this must suck. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, but the point is, if you actually analyze the pitch, it wasn't like what it should be for that pattern. But that pitch accent isn't about like the individual pitches. It's about like the flavor of each of the four patterns, and that was something where like music kind of got in the way. But I, I think, in, in the, like overall, it's been a, like a net positive, right? Do you think there's anything about the aspect of um, like practicing an instrument and getting good at that, and taking over that that like sort of skill yeah. of how to get better for Japanese? I mean, at the moment, like I've been trying to do like some that kind of like drilling and stuff. Like, tr like I've never been good at shadowing. <laughs> like the my, my short term memory is just not good enough. Like I hear it. And then I forget it, like, and while I'm saying it, I don't even know what the word is anymore. Um, yeah. 
but I, I've been trying to like get back into doing that. Even if it's like, there's a thing called chorusing where you like take just like a single phrase and you like loop it and then you just go over and over with it. Um, and I think like mechanically- And the same for that, guitar, right? Where you're talking about guitar or you're talking about like Japanese? That was that was for Japanese. But yeah, in guitar, yeah. Like, that's something you do. And for a guitar, I mean, what's very common is that like, firstly you use a metronome, you start at a lower tempo and then you increase the tempo um, as you get more comfortable with it. Um, and I definitely think that can apply to Japanese. I mean, I, personally, I didn't do that. Um, I'm trying to do that more now, but yeah. So I, I can't say yeah. for sure either way. Yeah, like in, in the Chinese learning, like Chinese learners, like high level Chinese learners, uh, there's this one guy, this French guy, that sounds like pretty much completely native. And Shalma, he interviewed him. And he used to be like a professional musician, but he had to like, he right. had like a wrist injury or something. And he said like, right. he, what he did was when he started learning Chinese, he would just uh, study for over 12 hours a day. And th that's just because it was normal for him because he would practice the yeah. instrument for like 12 hours a day. And that's how he got that's to like cool. native level in like five years, basically. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, like I do, I do feel like there is a certain amount of like mechanical, um, like you just need to like learn like how to tune your vowels to sound like a Japanese version of ah instead of ah right. or whatever. Um, and that you need to practice that, but and like listening back and like realizing that there was a problem and then trying to fix it. Um, I think if you like keep that process and you're constantly trying to look for stuff to improve on, like you'll definitely, um, there's no way you're going to get worse, right? <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. And we have um, Trash Gray in the chat here who actually uh, just started learning Japanese. So I, I think it's a good place to, <laughs> yeah, congratulations for real. And I, I think it's a good place to ask, I guess, what would your advice be to someone who just started learning Japanese in terms of they just learned like hiragana, for example, like what, where, where, where should they go from there? Because like, like every, we mentioned before, there's so yeah. many resources out there, but I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean, this is a hard question because my history of dealing with beginners has been very embarrassing. Like at university, I gave like a lecture to some people learning Japanese and like at the time I was just like, I'm not going to teach you anything. Here is uh, today's little children uh, raw. <laughs> Good luck. Um, and so I want to repent on my past failures and try to give good advice. So firstly, uh, like I, I was talking about before, do your best to figure out why you're doing Japanese and set goals according to like why you want to do it instead of what you feel like the community will like, you know, judge you for or whatever. Like, oh, you're a poser because you need to do this much or whatever. Like, that's the first thing. The second thing would be as much as possible, look for content that you're going to enjoy with Japanese and stick with it. Um, the next thing would be like, so I did RTK and I wrote down everything. I wouldn't recommend that. I've never done the the core 1K, JP 1K, whatever it's called. Um, so I can't really comment on that. I also never did um, the JLPT books. Um, I've heard that they helped a lot of people. So I can't, I can't really talk about that. But what I would say is that it's really important that you find a beginner resource that gets you through basic grammar. Um, and I would try to get through that as quickly as possible. So you don't want to be spending more than three months on basic grammar, I don't think. Um, anything more than that, and you just you risk like having that like beginner, like um, like like for example, like, I want to learn to code, and you go to a website, and then like here's some examples of how to do JavaScript, and you just like hop from free course to free course for the rest of your life. It's like you're never gonna uh, escape that if you don't set a cutoff for yourself. So I'd say like two or three months, get through all the basic grammar. In terms of kanji. I still personally think that there is a lot of um, benefit for learning about how radicals work and like learning to see kanji in terms of radicals. I know that like with the JP1K, they were taking more of the approach of just like learn it like a face, just like look at it and just like whatever. If that works for you, sure. If you're having problems with it, uh, look into doing something like recognition RTK. Um, again, like that's not like um, canon advice of like refold or whatever. But uh, I would say that like definitely knowing radicals has been a huge asset for me personally. And then from there, definitely don't be super concerned. Like when I first, when I was in high school, so before I found out about immersion, 
um, I actually like went to Japan for two weeks and I bought like raw ma manga while I was there. And like I would try to, I take like a book and I would like write out every sentence in Japanese and I try to like translate it and I would go like hello talk and try to like be like, why does this mean this? Or, like why, why are they saying it like this? Um, don't, don't do that. Just, just like focus on understanding what you can understand. Don't beat yourself up. Try to have fun. Yeah. Um, and another thing would be when you're like a little bit better. So like you've been doing it for a year or two, you know, you're like, I think outputting is one of those things. This is really controversial, but I don't feel like early outputting like, is a good thing. But I feel like once you're, you know, you can understand the majority of your input doing it here and there, as long as like the ratio is like 1% output, 99% input, I feel like that could, you know, really be good for your motivation and stuff. Especially like if you can find a Discord server or something where you can like be part of a, a small community and like really make connections through Japanese, I feel like that's uh, something pretty cool. Um, if you have any other questions about like more specific advice, just feel free to ask more. But yep. I think that's the gist of, of my advice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's yeah. pretty sol solid advice. Um, but I guess like um, going back to like Japanese for yourself, sure. like, do you think? What are your goals like with um, getting better and or even like possibly like moving to the country and stuff like that? So, like I said before, like I was scouted and like, you know, was potentially going to work for a Japanese uh, company here with them offering to introduce me to like actual Japanese companies. And, like some of the ones they were talking about were big, like um, what's the one that's like a DL site, but not just porn? <laughs> um, DMM, <laughs> right? They were saying, oh, we can hook you up maybe with DMM and stuff. And I have like done a lot of introspection and I found like I already have like my own like identity stuff that I, like I don't really want to go into. Um, but like I don't think I can deal with having to make that my everyday life of just like trying to prove to people that I'm more than just like a stereotype or, you know, also like having to work at like a, an actual Japanese company with like the overtime and the whatever. And like, this is your life now. There's no time for anything like I, I can't do that. Like, I love my hobbies too much. Um, if it was as like a composer or something, I'd, I'd really consider it. So in the future, I my plan at the moment in terms of work is like, I want to do like programming and stuff. And hopefully like, you know, as, as a junior dev, uh, if you can get good at your job to like do your, your job like pretty quickly and you don't want to take on any promotions, you can have a lot of free time to yeah. do your own stuff. And so like, that's really what I want to do. And if music stuff takes off, um, you know, I can always quit my job, you know. Um, and so, yeah, just looking at it like that, like trying to find how I can work the bare minimum to finance the stuff I actually want to do with my life. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's a surprising amount of people who do that now, like yeah. especially nowadays. Yeah, with, I think uh, it's a good, it's a good working one. Working remotely. For sure. Um, but yeah, in terms of Japanese, like... I definitely, in terms of my music, like I, I mean, I am uh, writing like bilingual music. So I feel like um, my ability to express myself through that and, you know, being, being in control of expressing stuff the way I want to express stuff, you know, is a limiting factor that like I want to work on and, uh, you know, have as much control over as I can. Um, and then potentially I want to start doing YouTube stuff and like live streams and, uh, you know, in Japanese and it's just really scary to start, you know, because <laughs> you're starting from nowhere, being super self-conscious. And I mean, at some point, you just got to do it, right? Um, but yeah, that's something that I'm interested in doing. Um, and like, I, actually, I found a Japanese server that has this thing called Kuegeki, which is like like a voice acting thing. So you get a script and you, you like, ha you know, you have your role and you have to like, you know, read the script and like act with everybody else, right? And I tried it a couple of times um, and it was like super fun. Um, it, it, it was like being in an anime because like the people were so good, right? Um, and I, I, there was just this feeling of like, I don't want to make people have to compromise and like ruin their their immersion into the scene, you know, um, by screwing up a reading or uh, stumbling over a word or, you know, having shitty pronunciation or something. And so there was just this responsibility of like, I, I want to get better um, so that I can participate in this thing that's really cool, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think those are really solid 
words of advice and also a forecast into your future. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe I think maybe that might be a good place to maybe end the podcast. Yeah. So, so if yeah. you have any questions, you can go send them in right now. We can we'll go ask the classic question to Miso and we'll close out the podcast. And at the end, we'll go answer any final questions you guys have before ending it out here. But leading into that, Miso, what is your message to the Korekara squad today? Uh, I guess try to have fun as much as you can because like living with like anxiety and whatever like really, really, really sucks. So like try to make Japanese one of the good things in your life and try to like not feel pressured by anybody else and just, you know, have fun, improve because you want to improve for yourself, not for anybody else. Not, yeah. Uh, I think that's my best advice. You love to see it. And with that, Miso, oh. we really appreciate you taking the time to come on today. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. We love it's a to huge have honor. You. I mean, it's an honor for us as well.